Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Debbie. I am Lori Cornell and I am filling in for Elizabeth today, Tuesday, June 21st. Good morning, Mama Sharon. So good to see you, even if it's just on Facebook. Oh, there's Debbie Nolan, my Debbie. I love her. Um, this is Elizabeth Sharon Ann's um, daily Bible study, and we go through the Bible in a year, um, and we do the daily Bible study every day. Um, please remember to, um, put your prayer request and praise reports in the comment. Um, oh, you just walked three miles. I didn't walk this morning. I woke up with that, um, a fever this morning, so I haven't walked. Um, good morning, Lynn. Um, so we are on June 21st. We are in Second Kings. For some reason, I thought we were still in First Kings, but we're reading about Elijah and Elisha. Elisha, even though er, Elijah, even though he wanted to um, call it quits after. Um, Good morning, Shirley. After um, Jezebel was going to kill him and he ran because he was scared. Um, good morning, Donna. Donna is like my second mama. I love her. Uh, good morning, Cassie. Good morning, Tanya. I get so excited when I do it on the weekday because all the people who are around the table join in. <laughs> it makes me feel official. Um, but uh, we're on Second Kings. Elijah had told uh, God he was done, and God led him to go put his cloak, and he threw his cloak on Elisha, and then he was quiet for a while, but now he's back. Ahab has died, and Elijah is back to uh, give um, King, oh, what is his name? Ahazar, Ahaza. I'm probably butchering his name. Good morning, Nancy. <laughs> Debbie. Um, so Elijah comes to uh, give the new king this message because um, he's fallen through the lattice at his palace. He wants to know if um, he's going to live, if he's going to recover and get out of bed or if he's going to die. And he sends the people to go uh, go talk to Beelzebub. <clears throat> and God tells Elijah to go give him uh, this message. You know, why are you sending people to Baal? Is there not a God in Israel? And since you didn't believe, uh, you're going to lay in your bed and die. But uplifting words for this morning. But... Uh, he uh so then he goes and gets the uh oh thank you nancy this is just woke up in the morning and did something with it um he goes and gets the prophet when he finds out at elijah he's like oh elijah so um but then we go on to um elijah is getting ready to be taken up by god and Elijah has been traveling with him now where Elijah, Elijah has been mentoring Elisha for about six years, they say. And um, Elijah is, he's going to Bethel and he tells Elijah to stay. Elijah's like, no, wherever you go, I'm never going to leave you. I'm going with you. And um, he gets to Bethel, group of prophets says, you know that um, the Lord is going to take Elijah up today. And he's like, I know, but be quiet. 
And so then Elijah travels to another city, travels to another city, and Elisha refuses to leave him, he says he's going to be beside him the whole entire time. What is interesting, I thought, is that Elijah, as he's getting ready to be taken up, takes the exact same route um, that Joshua took when he was coming into the pro promised land and conquering uh, with those wars and everything. And he, um, and they got the promised land. Um, Elijah takes the exact same route, but he's going out. Joshua is coming in. I thought that was interesting. Um, but what I thought about as I was reading this last night, kind of studying is that um, there are so many things about Elijah and Elisha's relationship that we can learn from. Like um, in our relationship with God or in the people that God places in our lives to mentor us. Like, are we willing to stay close even when, I'm sorry, y'all, my, uh, or I apologize, my mouth is so dry this morning. Um, are we willing to stay close even when it gets hard, even when it feels difficult, like going through all those towns and, and following Elijah and sticking close to his side? He, was, he didn't want to miss a thing. Elijah didn't. He wanted everything that, good morning, Eileen, everything that Elijah could teach him. He wanted every little bit. He was going to suck every little thing out of that relationship. Um, but Elisha at the end asked for a double portion of Elijah's spirit to be on him. Good morning, Anita. Um, but I think that the reason that, um, God was able to give that to Elijah is because Elisha had shown himself faithful as a servant. He had shown himself faithful in the small things, serving Elijah and following him and, and learning and being faithful. <clears throat> You're so sweet, Eileen. Um, also, I thought that um, when Elijah threw the cloak on Elisha, you know, he said, go back and think about what I've done to you. Like go back and, and really think about the cost of what it's going to cause to come and um, follow me. And so uh, Elisha at that very moment for, you know, counted the cost as best he could and decided I'm going to follow him. And his life was instantly transformed. It's kind of like when, um, it reminded me a picture of when we meet Christ and he calls us, you know, we think we count the cost, but do we really? And then we get in this relationship with Christ and he completely transforms our life, completely transforms everything about us. But are we willing to stick close to him when it gets hard, when it gets uncomfortable? Um, you know, like Elisha did with Elijah prior to his leaving and getting taken up into heaven. Are we willing to stick close, so close to God even when it's hard, even when he's refining us and transforming us and pointing out those things that we need to let go of in ourselves, or uh, when he's pointing out um, those things that um, he's beginning to heal, old wounds, are, are we willing to stick close to him even then and be transformed by his love? So that is what Elijah's um, and Elisha's uh, relationship spoke to me about when I was reading. Um, but I really like the relationship between them and the stories that they're telling about Elijah and um, Elisha because um, 
I think it's clear that they get frustrated with the people that they're speaking to. I mean, don't we all get frustrated with the people that we're speaking to? Um, so, I mean, I think it shows a human quality about them. Just because you're called of God doesn't mean you don't have the human qualities um, that we're, we get frustrated, we get upset, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so that is the second Kings. That's my nugget out of the second Kings is that it's a picture of our relationship with Christ and how transforming he is in our lives. Um, and then we go to Acts and Paul and Barnabas are out there on the, on the road preaching the good news to everybody. And once again, the Jews reject it. And so, um, the Gentiles will get the gift. Um, and I like where it says, it says in verse 48, when the Gentiles heard this, well, let me go back up. Sorry, Debbie. Um, in 46, it says, but since you have reject, rejected it and judged yourselves unworthy of eternal life, you will offer, we will offer it to the Gentiles for the Lord gave us this command when he said, I have made you a light to the Gentiles to bring salvation to the farthest corners of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were very glad and thanked the Lord for the message. All who were chosen for eternal life became believers. Um, I think that's interesting wording, all who were chosen. You know, God chooses all of us. We can choose to believe or we can choose not to believe. But praise God, he pursues us. And um, he pursues us and he loves us so much. Um, but then I am so excited about today um, because the Psalms is like my most favorite scripture ever, ever. I think it is my most favorite scripture ever. Psalms 139 is so good. So, so, so good. Every time that I am doubting or, um, you know, questioning, or I'm just having a pity party, or I just don't know what's going on, or I feel confused, I read this psalm. It is so good. And you know what? I was just going to read it out of the Daily Bible, but I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation because I like it better. I mean, 139 in the Daily Bible is really good, but the Passion Translation is really, really good. It says, oh, I love this psalm. Um. Let's see, Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every movement of my heart and soul, and you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book, and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way. And in kindness, you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. You've laid your hand upon me. This is just too wonderful, deep and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. Where, where could I go from your spirit? Where could I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, you are there too. If I fly with wings into the shining dawn, you are there. If I fly into the radiant sunset, you're there waiting. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. It's impossible to disappear from you or to ask the darkness to hide me for your presence is everywhere, bringing light into my night. There is no such thing as darkness with you. The night to you is as bright as the day. There's no difference between the two. You formed 
my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside and wove them all together in my mother's womb. Now that scripture, I want to tell you, the Hebrew word for knit or wove can also be translated as covered or defended. So I think that's really good. I think that's a good little nugget there. Um, I thank you, God, for making you so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelous, marvel, marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. Carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing into something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me, before I'd even seen the light of day. The number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you are thinking of me, how precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires toward me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. When I wake up each morning, you're still with me. Uh, and then in 23 he says, God, I invite your searching gaze into my heart. Examine me through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Put me to the test. And still, through all my anxious cares, oh, and sift through all my anxious cares, See if there is any path of pain I'm walking in and lead me back to your glorious everlasting way, the path that brings me back to you. Y'all, that scripture says to me how much, how much God thinks about me, how much God loves us. You know, for any, any of you that are out there listening, this scripture says that he created you specifically with every single piece, with every vessel, with every blood cell, with every particle of your being. He oversaw it and created it. He didn't just speak it into existence. He created every part of your being. And, you know, the enemy came into this world to... Um, to uh, cause us to not know our identity and who we are and who created us and the authority and the power that we have in that creation. Um, and he robs us of that every single day. The world constantly robs us of that every single day. But if we will stay in God's word, um, and, lit, and read his word and soak in his words, we'll begin to understand who it is that we are, who it is that he created us to be, what it is he created us for. He created us to take dominion over the earth. And we have that authority and let's not let the enemy rob us of that authority so that we can begin to speak against the things that um, come against our families, are coming against our nation, and the compromise and the perverted truth of God that has just been run amok. And, um, you know, that we know who we are and we know who God is. He is truth. He is love. He is justice. Um, and he's just amazing, um, that we could ever doubt after reading Psalms 139, that we could ever doubt that we're not loved, that we could ever doubt that he doesn't care about every single part of our being. Um, he's just amazing. He's just amazing. Um, <clears throat> And as I read that, I'm thinking, huh, that's kind of confirms every, everything Elizabeth says, that everything is as it should be. 
at this very moment because he knew before I even saw the light of day that today I would sit here and do Bible study. He knew that before Elizabeth saw the light of day that she would be with her daddy today. Um, he knew. I mean, he knew that that whoever turns on this on this Bible study would turn it on today to listen today and that those words would be spoken. He knew, lest we ever forget that he is not in control. He is not a powerful God. He knew everything and he is, controls everything. Ah, I love him so much. So good. He's such a good, good God. And then, um, and, you know, the other thing Elizabeth says, which, and I know I've been saying that a lot, but um, uh, Elizabeth quotes the end, not in the Passion Translation, but she quotes it, you know, search, search me, O God, and know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts, point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Elizabeth. Always, always, always search my heart, oh God. Search my heart, oh God. Search me, oh God. Tell me where I've been wrong so that I can get back in, back into alignment with you. Ah, so good. Proverbs 17, 19 through 21. Anyone who loves to quarrel loves sin. Anyone who trusts in high walls invites disaster. You know, that means to me, that means, um, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, you can trust in all the best technology. You can trust in the high walls that surround a castle. You can trust in so many external things to think that you are going to be kept safe and you are going to be kept, but those things are not going to keep you safe. Those things are not going to save you. Those things are not going to bless you and transform you and um because the only thing that we can trust in that would keep us safe and keep it and that doesn't necessarily mean that we won't experience bad things um but it means our death would not be like the world's death because we don't die we have everlasting life we have eternal life um but if we trust in things that are external versus trusting in the one true God, we're going to invite disaster. The crooked heart will not prosper. The lying tongue tumbles into trouble. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? It is painful to be a parent of a fool. There is no joy for the father of a rebel. You know, I used to think, um, all the time when I, I first came to God, I used to read the Proverbs and read things like that. And I was like, oh, my poor mother, my poor, poor, poor mother. Um, but in saying that, um, because I was an awful child, I was an awful child. But in saying that, because I have um, pursued God and, and, and came to God and um, walked with him even and stayed close with him even when it was hard and it was uncomfortable and it felt painful. Um, my mother has seen God transform me. And that is a witness to my mother. And um, as a result, that relationship has been completely restored. And um, my mother and I have a good relationship. Um, so, and then I have a bonus mom in Miss Donna Long. And then I have a bonus sister from another mister in Miss Kimberly. Um, but that is all I know today. Um, so I just want to send you off all with a blessing and pray for you guys real quick, if you don't mind. Oh, there's Sherry. Good morning, Sherry. Um, so God, I just thank you. 
God, I just thank you that you pursue us in the midst of whatever we're doing in life. God, you pursue us with your love. You pursue us with your compassion. You pursue us, God, because you want relationship with us and because you love us and you created us to be with you. So God, I thank you right now that your love would just engulf those that would hear this today. God, that that your love would become real and tangible um, to those that, that listen today, um, that they would know that they are loved. God, that if, if somebody should hear this that is feeling unloved and lonely, God, they, your presence, your presence and how you created them and how you called them and purposed them, God, that you would make that tangible to them right now in the name of Jesus. So God, I just thank you for blessings upon everyone that would hear this, blessings upon Elizabeth and all the women that work for her and all the volunteers, blessings upon blessings. God, I thank you for such a wonderful day. So in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for joining me this morning. It was a pleasure to substitute for Elizabeth, um, although I could never fill her shoes, but um, I hope you all have a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining us.